Hey guys, your local PSYOPS agent here. Mercury is this cool shiny liquid which can form alloys with most metals to form intermetallic compounds called amalgams, and I'll be demonstrating the more rare and interesting ones I could find. Like for example this weird mercury sponge which I've whooped a couple times, some potassium stuff, and a zinc amalgam. You might have heard of the sodium amalgam, but how about the potassium one? Well, I've done it once before, but I haven't really done anything interesting with it. First though, I'll have to take out a piece of potassium, which to me is quite interesting by itself, because potassium is extremely rarely used, like ever. Pure potassium metal is shiny, but this one isn't because when exposed to oxygen in the atmosphere, potassium tarnishes to form oxides and superoxides of potassium. And even though this was stored in a closed bottle for almost all of its lifetime, some oxygen still manages to get in there. That's why when I cut it in half, you can see its shiny interior. What's even cooler about potassium is its soft and almost butter-like consistency, and I can pull it apart using minimal force in my fingers and kind of looks like metallic Nutella. Anyway, this is getting too educational, check this shit out! Well, that was cool, but I guess my workbench would disagree. So please don't do that at home, in case you find 100 grams of potassium under the sink. Alright, no more messing around. Here's a little bit of mercury and I've added some fresh potassium into it. I've made sure to place the potassium on the shiny end because otherwise the mercury wouldn't be able to go through the potassium's oxide layer. After all that, I flipped the potassium and you can see the mercury has already infected the potassium blob. And I think it's a good idea to tell you the basics of amalgamations now. Basically, amalgams happen because of something called metallic bonding. What you really have to know is that metallic bonding accounts for the physical properties of metals, like strength, ductility or even electrical resistance, and arises from the attractive force between electrons. And that's pretty much the basis of how amalgamations work, which is by using that attractive force to push the atoms of the metals and the mercury itself onto a crystal lattice structure. At first a purple explosion occurs, but that's just the regular potassium. Then I look into the beaker and I see a piece of the potassium amalgam bubbling to produce hydrogen gas, potassium hydroxide and mercury metal. Potassium amalgam not only moderates the sensitivity of the actual potassium, it also gives it some practical uses, like for example in reductions. However, a much better pick for that is the zinc amalgam, which I'll be making later in the video and I'll be reducing uranium with it. For the next amalgam, I'll be making the ammonium amalgam, also known as the puffy mercury sponge. The ammonium amalgam looks really cool, but functionality-wise it's pretty useless. However, that's all the reason I need to make it. Here's some fresh mercury, which I've recovered from the potassium amalgam. And that's the thing about amalgams, if you know what you're doing, then you can probably recover the mercury. And then I've added some concentrated ammonia solution. Then I've added some hydrochloric acid, and here I was expecting it to puff up and become a sponge. But to my confusion, nothing happened. And that's because I forgot that to make the mercury sponge, I have to make the sodium amalgam. For that, I wiped down the water, and I thrown in some sodium to make the sodium amalgam. And once again, nothing was happening. But don't worry, I've watched Nyred, and I remember that you have to heat up the sodium so that the mercury can react with it. And so I did. Again, nothing happened, so I got confused. And that was until I've actually moved the mercury into the sodium. And this happened. So we've just formed the sodium amalgam, and it's a really bulky solid for some reason. Nonetheless, it's quite similar to the potassium one, but the sodium amalgam is much more common. Then I started adding some ammonia, followed by hydrochloric acid. What's happening here is the hydrochloric acid is reacting with the ammonia to make ammonium chloride. This ammonium chloride then reacts with the sodium amalgam to make the ammonium amalgam, which puffs up. First I started booping it with a spoon, then I was going to boop it with my finger, but I remembered that I'd probably get poisoned by the mercury. So I've put on a glove. The mercury was really squishy and I've enjoyed booping it. At some point I've tried picking it up, but instead I've seemed to pick up some weird rock. It seemed to be a solid piece of the sodium amalgam, which I guess didn't react or something. Eventually the ammonium amalgam ran its course, and I've picked up this absolutely diabolical close-up shot. Anyway, now it's time for the main event, which is the zinc amalgam, and some uranium chemistry. First, I've tried to make the zinc amalgam by adding zinc powder onto mercury directly, but that just didn't seem to work. So I've had to get creative, and for that I'll have to bust out another, more chemical way of making amalgams. You see, amalgams can either be prepared by dropping metallic mercury onto a metal, but that can be inefficient due to how mercury usually is. So it's sometimes better to just make a mercury chloride solution and then marinate the metal in it. To do that, I'll first have to make some mercury chloride. This process actually deserves a video of its own, and if you'd like to see it, make sure to like and subscribe. 
What's happening here is the mercury is getting liberated from the solution by the zinc. Zinc is more reactive than mercury, so it takes mercury's place in the solution. Meanwhile, however, the exact opposite is happening and the mercury deposits on the surface of the zinc. The mercury on the surface of the zinc forms an amalgam. Now it's time to do some uranium chemistry. So I've added some uranyl chloride into a beaker and I've diluted it with some concentrated hydrochloric acid and water. Then I've added the zinc amalgam and I've started stirring it. Slowly, the solution changes from a yellowish color to this greenish one. And because we've got a very heavy green here, that means that a complex with the uranium-3 just formed. What's happening here is the uranyl ion is getting reduced by the zinc amalgam into the plus 4 oxidation state, and then further into the plus 3. Zinc amalgam is also known as the Jones reductor, and it's an extremely potent reducing agent, which is capable of reducing many metal ions into the 3 plus oxidation state. Anyway, now's the problematic part. The paper I was following, which describes the process and the ideal conditions for the reduction of the uranium-6, did not extract the complex or the uranium-3 salt. Which is pretty sad, because I've tried to do something, but in the end I just got a green salt, which is either the actual uranium trichloride, because Wikipedia says so, or it's just the tetrachloride. If you like my channel and want to help me keep my lights on, then you can tip me a few bucks via the YouTube membership program. And in return, you'll get some perks which I personally worked on. So, you should join my YouTube membership. NOW!